Welcome to Web Show Wednesday. This is Jamie Larson with the Snap Society. I am so thrilled to introduce our guest, Jennifer Tinetti Spellman. She comes from Jellybean Pictures, and um, she's been in the photography industry for five years. But before she was in the photography world, she actually was in the publishing, marketing, advertising world with uh, places like, get this, O Magazine. Teen Magazine and Seventeen. Pretty impressive, right? She is an incredible woman. Um, what I love about her is that she is very confident, but she meets people where they're at. She does not put herself on a pedestal. She is extremely approachable, and in fact, I want to officially deem her the big sister of photography because I just think she is absolutely incredible. Um, if you stay tuned, you will be able to partake in our bloopers um, or our outtakes that we had. I've never done that before, but it was just some funny things happened. Um, and I just need to give you a little warning. We are both Italian. We talk a little fast when we get excited and we talk loud. So you may need to turn your, your volume down. Um, so welcome, Jennifer. Welcome, Jennifer, to the Snap Society. Thanks, Jamie. Great to be here. Okay, so we are going to be talking about a subject that I think can anybody can relate to, really, but especially photographers, um, and it's the topic of insecurities. And you're going to give us a couple of tips to combat um, those insecurities that creep up in us. So um, the first thing that I want to ask you is, when we see ourselves falling into the comparison game, what advice do you have for us? You know, that, that is like the number one insecurity that I hear all the time from mm -hmm. students and fellow photographers is that, mm -hmm. you know, oh my gosh, I'm not as good as X, Y, Z. And that, you know, and I think that the number one tip to kind of reduce the noise, which is mm -hmm. what I call it, it's all those little voices inside your head saying, I'm not as good as this person, or I strive to be like this person. And what it does is it really, it silences your own voice. And then you can't even hear what's, what's going on in your own head. Right. And unfortunately, as great as social media is in, on so many levels, mm -hmm. this is where I find to be probably one of the biggest downfalls of social mm -hmm. media. And that is, right. I call it filling the feed. When mm -hmm. you fill your feed with all of these other photographers and they're constantly popping up and you're looking at them and you're starting to say, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be as good as them. That's when you need to say, okay, I have to stop it. And I always, mm -hmm. I always like to do it in a kind way. I always say, you don't have to unlike someone's page because... Right. No one wants to lose a like. Um, right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> so just at least hide their feed, which is very easy to do, so that they're not constantly bombarding in your face every time you log on to Facebook. Right. And there is this fine line between inspiration, somebody inspiring you and challenging you, and then rolling over to um, it kind of eating at you and sucking away your self-esteem and that sort of thing. So I think you're right, especially, you know, um, just hiding it and, and instead of unliking it altogether. That's a good, that's a good fix. So um, with all the different styles that we're kind of inundated with, we've got people who use a ton of props. We've got people who use natural light or um, people who use studio light. Um, and how, how do we stay true to our personal style? Well, you know, I always say that it's your personal style is something that you're really born with. And mm -hmm. for me, I find inspiration from things outside of photography. I gain, get a lot of my inspiration and gain a lot of inspiration from music Right. and from observing people walking down the street and being a real people watcher and just seeing the habits of people. So I think, you know, it's, you have to do what makes your heart sing. And that's something I always say. So if you see images that are totally propped out and you love them, you know that's where your heart lies. Yes. Me, you know, being documentary and a lot more of that really, you know, hardcore lifestyle, that's what turns me on in terms of what I'm going to be able to produce. And I mm -hmm. love the real. I love real life. So that's what I want to depict. And I think one of the biggest trappings, too, is that you tend to want to follow the herd. You know, mm -hmm. there's a big trend out there, and you want to be a part of it, and yet you're not, again, listening to your own voice and your own internal cues. And I think this also happens, and Jamie, we could even say this for processing, right? I mean, right. people go, oh, I want to do the dreamy look. I want to do the matte mm -hmm. look. I want to do this look, that look. And they're seeing all these things, again, popping up everywhere mm -hmm. on Pinterest, too. Not just Facebook, but on Pinterest. And this is where you have to say, okay, what is the style I really like? What is the style I'm really drawn to? Whether or not it's the masses that love it or not is totally, you know, up to you in terms of what you like. But for me, for example, you know, I doing the documentary style, I always find that it's not the most popular style. Right, You know, right. there are people 
like a lot of the posing, but if I go against my own grain just mm -hmm. to satisfy what the masses want, then it's a no-win situation in my book for myself yes. or for my client. Yeah, so I think in the very beginning of that question, you hit it right on the head, and that is you have to figure out, first of all, what your personal style is in order for you to be you know, original and true to yourself. And I think a lot of times people aren't figuring out what their own personal style is. So figuring out what your personal style is and then really sticking to that and running with it and perfecting it and not just being the, you know, copycat photographer and, and unoriginal. So I love that. That's good. Um, okay, so this is something right now, it's so applicable in these couple of months. Um, I remember the first couple of years when I was in um, the business and I'm booked solid month after month and, you know, I'm having to put people on a waiting list and then all of a sudden January hits and I don't have any clients and I'm thinking, oh no, I'm done for. I, I have no business now. And then February and it's the same thing. I have no business. And then I realized that it, it's not like that. So what, what do you say to those people who kind of have the freak out mode in January and February? Oh yeah, that's that, that's the downtime, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, right. I'm this big advocate for embracing the downtime. I mean, look, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sitting here in a wool hat, I'm freezing um, <laughs> because it's New York and where I am, and it's winter at its finest. We're in the middle of vortexes every five minutes. Right, right. Um, so, so let's think about this for a minute. You know, I always tell people step back for a minute and realize that this business is very cyclical, and yes. it truly has its you know, heightened seasons, which are usually mm -hmm. spring and fall. And that goes for regular, you know, children photographer, um, a wedding photographer. I mean, really, when you think about any type of photography, it really is a cyclical business. Mm -hmm. So you cannot expect to be busy all the time. Right. And then I always say, if you were, you would not like that at all because you'd never have the downtime to really rediscover yourself and give yourself some breathing room. And right. the way I look at downtime is, it's a time to try out a new lens that you may mm -hmm. have uh, or, or rent a lens. I always say, if you don't want to buy a lens and you want to just have some fun and you know rent out a super yeah. wide angle, this is the time to do it. This is the time to go back and read those books that you, you, know, you had to have on photography. And you right. have to them. So right. now is the time to do that. You know, now's the time to make a business plan for your business moving forward, mm -hmm. you know, with very your actionable steps. There's a million things to do that you can really embrace the downtime with. And again, most importantly to me, it's a time to recharge. Yes. When I, you know, and think about it. You do all your personal shooting. You know, I have mm -hmm. a six-year-old daughter, so yeah. she's in front of my lens constantly. Right, right. And it's when I really experiment because I'm not going to be experimenting when I go into a client's home as much as I'm going to be doing it on my own downtime. Yes. I love it. I take off literally every December. I take off the whole month. And in January, I teach. And I just had my first uh, session. What is it? January 25th was my first session of the year. And I loved it. I got breathing room. I got clarity. And now I'm ready to take on the year again. Yes. Yeah. And I have um, about seven or eight years of photo books for my family that I still have to put together. So I always think yeah. this is the time to do this. So um, I think that's great. We just need to be really intentional, knowing that when we're scheduling out our year, that these are the months that we have that we can actually go out to coffee with our friends and all the friends that we had to neglect during the fall. Um, we can right. recharge, we can um, learn and, and, and all of that. So that's so great. I love that. So just being intentional about that downtime. Exactly. And Jamie, you just sparked, you know, something in my head too. You know, during the course of the year, when you constantly are saying to yourself, I don't have time to do that right now, i.e. with the personal pictures, yes. write it down. Like, yes. Yeah, I don't know, you know, and just because this way, when the downtime comes, go back to that list of things right. you said you didn't have time for that now you can have time for. And I think you also hit something. Friends, you know, my neglected friends that I'm now uh, the coffee with all winter. Right. You know, this is the time, too, where you don't have, you don't have to do anything in photography. Nothing. Yes. You don't have yes. to do a thing in photography. Some people really flourish after taking that big break from photography. Put down the camera. Don't even touch it. Right. You know, so there's you know, many ways. But like I said, just during the course of the year, when you find yourself strapped and you can't do your personal projects, that's when you write them down. And mm -hmm. as you said, be very purposeful and revisit them during our downtime. Yep. I love that. I love it to write it down because so often we forget when we actually have the time, we forget what we wanted to do. So, um, okay. 
So what made you start talking about insecurities? Because I, first of all, let me just say, I love that you're talking about this because it's a subject that a lot of people aren't talking about, but we should be talking about because we've all experienced it. And really, you are the first person recently that I've been reading about who has been writing about this and talking about it, which is just amazing that more people aren't talking about it. Um, so what made you bring this up in our industry? I think that um, it was somewhat a taboo of a subject. Um, mm -hmm. It's interesting that unless you put these things out there, the minute I put, um, I did an article for a forum, I would say probably about three months ago or so, rock mm -hmm. the shot. Yes. And I did this article called Get Out of Your Own Way. And mm -hmm. it's because I would hear these insecurities that were constantly happening from my students, but I'm also, you know, five years in, I remember a lot of what they were saying in the beginning being exactly how I felt. And I said, how come no one's addressing this? How come no one's bringing this to the forefront? Because I know there's a lot of people that can relate. So I went out, I wrote this article, and it was like wildfire. The amount of messages I got, the amount of feedback Rock the Shot got from it. And I know I struck a chord. And I just think it had to be someone just saying it and yeah. almost saying that it's OK, but at the same time saying, it's all in you. See, all of these insecurities are lying in you. So you could have someone telling you that you are the best photographer in the nation. Mm -hmm. Unless you believe that, it means nothing. So right. what I did is I cycled through some very common insecurities with that article. And from there, I had an idea to have a class. And I thought it would be a great idea to really, it's almost like a psychology class. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the middle of it right now. Um, so I approached the Define School, um, okay. Jess, who runs fine school, Jessica. And I said, Jessica, I think that I have a great idea for a class that hasn't been done before. And that is tackling insecurities and really defining success as you define it. Cause that's a very personal word mm -hmm. and pitched it. She loved it. And we are in the middle of it right now. It's called rewind mm -hmm. from define school. And the class has been going phenomenal. And it really, really becomes this thing where, you know, people are laying it all out there so that they can mm -hmm. move past it. Yeah. But I do just think it's something that people didn't want to talk about and were afraid to say, oh, wow, I feel like that too. Because right. they don't want to be the first to say it. So sometimes you right. just have to open the door. And every, yeah, Exactly, because everybody has felt it before. But like you said, until somebody even, I think, I think everybody's felt it, but when I felt it, I'm sure nobody else has felt it because their stuff is so much better, right? And then and, they're thinking and, the same thing. Right, and are you really running out there willing to describe how weak you feel inside? Right. I mean, that's right. a big deal. Like, unless yeah. other people starting to give it a voice, then it becomes okay. But yeah. you know, you can't expect people to just kind of air it all out unless yeah. people start talking about it. And yes. I mean okay. So Jennifer, you are talking about this defined class that you're doing currently. Um, so I'm guessing that none of us can be a part of it right now because it's already gone or already started. Um, are you going to be doing this class again or something similar to it that we could join in in the future? Absolutely. Um, because the class did sell out within an hour, I believe, from when are the defined announced me? it. Yeah. Again, that's amazing. Obviously there's a need, right? There's a yes. need. Um, so what we decided to do was have me run it again in February. Okay. And on February third, it's the okay. first Monday, right? Yep. Yep. Um, yep. February third. Had to check the calendar. Uh, registration will open up for okay. the February class. Okay. Um, and then I'll probably run it one more time this year as well. But I know for sure it will be. Um, on February 3rd that it opens up and then we start mid-February. Now you also have something else really exciting that you've had for a little while and uh, tell us about that. Okay, so um, I have many goals and this was one of my goals and it was to write a manual Ugh. called Don't Take Fees. Love that. Um, this, and what was great is this manual was just born out of questions I've received over the past five years about how I get children to smile so naturally and act naturally in front of the camera. Yes. So I kind of put all of my experience in the past five years. So there was tons of tips and tricks in here, but not just for getting the natural smiles, but for shooting light indoors and out and shooting documentary and workflow and all that. Can you show us stuff. a picture? Sure. It's called Don't Say Cheese. Okay. Because it couldn't say anything worse to get a cheesy smile. Right. <laughs> Um, and like I said, it's a hard copy only. Beautiful. We, um, we here in the Tinetti Spellman household uh, like books. We don't like e-books. And yes. I like to be able to visually see yummy images and yes. touch and feel and dog ear and dog. I and all am a total stuff. book girl. Yes. Okay. So yes. Um, this will be actually sent hard copy via yeah. mailbox to people yes. so they can have it. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remember that? So they can have it on their coffee table and they can enjoy it, feel it, touch it, see it. Um, so that's, a, I, I still am waiting for mine. I'm excited. I, I'm, I want this don't say cheese book. <laughs> Um, that in the mail too, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Give me my address. Okay. So for SNAP Society members only, so if you have become a VIP member, which you do from entering your name and email address on the sidebar or below, um, VIP members are privy to a discount. Is that correct? Now don't tell us the discount code because I'm actually going to email that out later on in the week to people. But what yeah. was the discount that you said? What was the Between, percent? Um, it's 15% off. 15%. Okay. okay. Just so that everyone knows, it's thirty-eight dollar retail for the okay. price minus the fifteen percent off, awesome. but no code right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is so generous, Jennifer. I am so glad that you took the time out to uh, to talk to us about this, and I just think that this is such great information for us that that we can take with us. And I want to encourage everybody if you can get into that February third class. Like she said, the last class sold out in an hour. So if you're interested, I'd probably um, be on top of that one, right? Yeah, absolutely. Is and, there a way they can get um, notifications from Define School or something? Sure. They can go to the Define School website and okay. sign up for it. You can also find the Define School on Facebook because that seems to be where we all live, um, uh -huh. which is part of the problem, as I said before. Right, right. Um, and also on my Jelly Bean Pictures Facebook page, I mean, I, I will be promoting it up until the day the registration opens okay. and on day of registration, of course, as well. Okay. Thank you so much, Jennifer, and I hope that we can have you on here again. Thanks, Jamie. I'd love it. Thank you so much. Okay. We'll talk to you soon. And I'm here with Jennifer Tanati. I'm very nervous no, to say your you name. Got, you got it wrong. You got it wrong. Jennifer Tanati, is that right? No, Spellman. No. <laughs> okay, you tell me. What is your name? Who are you? Uh, it's Tonetti. Tonetti, like a toe. On but the you said you say it like an A. Which is Tanetti, ta, <laughs> You're doing, you're putting the A at the end. You're going to naughty, but it's Tonetti, Tonetti. Okay. Tonetti. Yes. Tinetti. Okay. Woo, let's do this again. <laughs> what? Yes, you may have gum, but you may not have any candy. You already had hot chocolate. She's on here, okay, guys? I'm still not done. Do you want to come say hi real quick? Real quick, say hello. Say hi. Say hello. This is John. Hello. This is John Henry. Do they know where I'm from? Do they know where I'm from? No, but they want to. They want to go where you are. Tell. tell I live in, I'm in New York, guys. And Yay! 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 Oh, John Henry's so excited he fell down. Yeah. <laughs>